The opposition Indigenous Affairs spokesman Julian Lisa has accused the government of failing to properly engage the community on the voice to Parliament. It comes as Liberal MPs will be summoned to Canberra to determine the party's position on the upcoming referendum. Let's go live to Olivia Kaisley, who was at the press club today with Julian Lisa for that address. Olivia, what did Mr Lisa have to say? Well, he really sort of returned fire and accused Labor of mucking up attempts to strike consensus on the voice referendum. He accused the government uh, of undertaking a top-down approach. He said that the Liberals had come to the voice with an open mind and also called on the federal government to reinstate local and regional bodies as part of the voice to parliament plan. Another criticism he had was he raised fresh concerns about the second clause of the proposed wording for the constitutional changes of the voice. As we know, conservative critics are concerned that this proposed voice body would be able to consult with the executive government, which they say could add an added layer of bureaucracy. The second clause is ultimately the lead in the saddle bag of a successful referendum. I think that clause and the symbolic statement at the beginning are those things which provide uh, the greatest risk of judicial interpretation that we haven't properly uh, uh, considered. It comes as our colleague Andrew Clennell this morning revealed that Peter Dutton is going to summon party members to Canberra this Wednesday to try and finalise a position on The Voice. It seems the opposition leader is still pushing for a united stance on the referendum. I asked Julian Lisa about this earlier. Are you able to provide some more detail on why you think Peter Dutton is trying to get a united stance on The Voice and not letting MPs have a free say in supporting the government's proposal and also why the timing of this party room meeting this Wednesday? Well, look, I can't speak to the timing of the party room meeting. Um, that's a matter ultimately for, for the leader. And I don't agree with your speculation about what, what it is that we, we're necessarily going to be doing. Uh, the party room will have its, uh, its discussion. We'll be looking at, uh, uh, at the range of different possibilities in relation to this. Now, one of the things I think the Prime Minister could do to help uh, the discussion that we'll be having is respond to the issues that I've raised today and deal seriously with the issues that I raised in relation to the amendment and in relation to the rolling out of the local and regional voices. So do you think it's still possible that the party won't reach a united stance on this? Well, look, I'm not going to speculate on what's going to happen in the party room uh, later this week. Um, uh, that's a matter for individual members coming together collectively, and I respect the party room and its decision-making processes. The Prime Minister says the opposition is holding up the process. He was a part of a government that was went to an election in 2019 saying they would advance these issues. Julian Lisa himself was a part of a process way back in 2014, nearly a decade ago, that spoke about uh, uh, representations being able to be made to parliament and executive government. Julian Lisa has been a part of the writing of the words uh, that uh, in the legislation. And I'd urge people like Julian Lisa, who has a history of genuine support for reconciliation and advancing the interests of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people to not just vote yes, but campaign for yes in the referendum. This all comes in the wake of the Liberals' crushing by-election defeat in Aston over the weekend. The opposition leader is under increased pressure to shift focus on key policies, with moderate Liberals arguing that the, uh, the party should move back to the political centre, Kieran.